On July 17, 1918, Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Imperial Russia, was gunned down alongside his family by Bolsheviks. The details of the crime became one of recent history's greatest mysteries, and the absence of bodies to confirm their deaths left the door open for a string of imposters. That is, until a series of archaeological discoveries finally let the truth come out. Today, we're going to take a look at the archaeological discovery that solved the Romanov mystery. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what historical mysteries you would like to hear about. Da! Let's go to Russia! It was March of 1917 when Nicholas abdicated his throne and just a few months later, Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks had completed their takeover of the government. The former Tsar and his family sought asylum abroad. While they applied in several different nations, their main hope was that the United Kingdom would intervene because King George V was a cousin. However, the Romanovs weren't well regarded in Britain and the king refused. Nicholas and his family would remain trapped in Lenin's new Soviet state. After the revolution, Vladimir Lenin and the Bolsheviks imprisoned Nicholas and his family, which included his wife Alexandra and their children Alexei, Anastasia, Maria, Tatiana, and Olga. The party wanted the Romanovs out of the public eye for fear that remaining royalists might rally behind Nicholas and eventually help him regain power. In April of 1918, the family was moved to a merchant's home in Ekaterinburg, a city in the Ural Mountains. They likely didn't know it when they arrived, but this place, known as Ipatiev House, would be the last place they would ever see. Just a few months later, on July 17, 1918, the entire family, along with their servants, were shot on orders believed to have come from Lenin himself. When the word of the massacre spread, the party would admit taking out Nicholas, but deny they had any part in the demise of his wife and children. It all started early on the morning of July 17, 1918. Guards awoke the family and their servants and instructed them to get dressed. The Romanovs were told that anti-revolutionary, pro-Tsar troops were getting close to the city. The family would have to flee Ipatiev House and get out of Ekaterinburg. They were taken to a small, dark room in the building, and they were told to wait until their transportation arrived. The family requested chairs for their young children to sit in, and the guards obliged but the kindness was merely a ruse. The Romanovs were not, in fact, being moved. According to Yakov Yurovsky, who was in charge at the time, the family was briefly left alone in the room. Then Yurovsky led a group of guards in and ordered the Romanovs to stand along the wall. He read a declaration by the local government that the family was to be executed immediately. Nikolai Alexandrovich and your Confused, Nicholas stammered, what, what? Yurovsky replied by saying, this, and then shot Nicholas in the chest. The other gunman opened fire and Nicholas fell. His wife Alexandra was shot next. As for the rest of the family, jewels embedded in the girl's clothes acted like bulletproof vests, and miraculously, they survived the hail of bullets. At this point, the firing squad changed tactics and used their bayonets but the jewels made that difficult as well. Next, the guards fired a finishing shot to the head of every remaining family member and servant. Despite this, two of the young girls were still conscious and were then bludgeoned with rifle butts. Not a pretty ending for the royals. No one survived. No one human, at least. You see, the Romanovs loved pets, and they kept them even while being held prisoner. When the family was brought to Ipatev House, they brought their three dogs, Joy, Jimmy, and Ortipo, along with them. Joy, the dog that belonged to Alexei, would be the only one, human or canine, to survive. The dog would later be adopted by another family and spend the rest of its life in England. Once the deed was done, the guards had to get rid of the bodies. Initially, the Romanov's remains were dropped into a mine shaft and then burned with acid to make them unidentifiable. However, shortly thereafter, it was determined that the mine was too shallow and the remains were recovered and moved. This time, they were reburied in a grave in the woods outside of Ekaterinburg. This would be the family's resting place for the next several decades. 
In 1979, a geologist named Alexander Avdonin began looking for the site of the Romanov's grave. He had heard rumors of its location when he was younger and finally made the decision to track it down. With help from Yakov Yurovsky's son and some mysterious notes left behind in an old journal, Avdonin was able to locate the grave and exhume the Romanovs. However, fearing that the communist government wouldn't want the secret exposed, the two reburied the bodies and kept the find a secret. It wouldn't be until 1988, after the government had slightly softened its position on the Romanovs, that Avdonin would come forward about his find. Finally, after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, 12 years after they were first discovered, the government sent a team to excavate the Romanov family. Using DNA from Prince Philip, a Romanov relative and the husband of Queen Elizabeth II, scientists were finally able to confirm once and for all that the remains belonged to the lost royal family and their servants. However, in a bizarre twist no one expected, the tests also revealed that two of the Romanovs were missing. The bodies of Tsarevich Alexei and Grand Duchess Maria were not in the grave. The grave discovered in 1979 contained the remains of Nicholas, Alexandra, Olga, Tatiana, and Anastasia. But that's not all. Entombed with the family was their physician, Eugene Botkin, their cook, Ivan Karidinov, their footman, Alexei Trupp, and lady-in-waiting, Anna Demidova. The other two children, Alexei and Maria, however, were nowhere to be found. While there was no way of knowing at the time, these two had been buried separately in a grave relatively close by. Because the Romanov shooting was carried out in secret and the government never officially acknowledged that the family was gone, rumors of their survival began to circulate. Starting in the 1920s, several individuals made claims to being one of the Romanovs. The most infamous being the imposter Anna Anderson, who claimed to be the Tsar's youngest daughter, Anastasia. Her story would draw heavy media coverage and became the subject of several sensationalized biographies. It would also inspire numerous fictional works, including novels, ballets, and animated movie musicals. However, DNA tests conducted after the discovery of the Romanov's remains finally debunked her story. When the Romanov's tomb was discovered in the 1970s and the bodies of Alexei and Maria weren't among the others, these theories and rumors reignited and people again began to hold out hope that at least two of the royals had escaped their fate. Sadly, that hope would turn out to be in vain. While most of the Romanov family and their entourage had been exhumed in 1991, Maria and Alexei were still missing. Over the next several decades, many would search for the lost children, but their searches were futile. The truth was, Yurovsky had been ordered to be sure no one would ever identify the remains. This is why he burned them with acid, and it was to this end, confusing anyone who might find them, that he decided to bury some of them separately. Finally, in 2007, an amateur archaeologist named Sergei Plotnikov located the remains of the missing children. They had been buried a mere 230 feet from the rest of their family. The remains discovered by Plotnikov in 2007 appeared to be in a condition substantially similar to those that had been dug up 16 years earlier. Plotnikov noted that the bodies had shown signs they endured a violent attack. According to the amateur archaeologist, it was plainly apparent that whoever he had discovered didn't pass away peacefully. The recovered bodies were in a bad state, and while there were no suggestions of bullets, damage to the remains suggested they had been doused with acid and set on fire. Not too long after, DNA testing would confirm that these remains were, in fact, the bodies of the missing royal children, Alexei and Maria Romanov. When the remains of Nicholas, his wife, and their children were exhumed in the 1990s, they were given a high-profile funeral. There was some disagreement on whether they should be reburied in Ekaterinburg or moved to St. Petersburg, but a government commission ultimately selected the latter. Finally, on July 17, 1998, 80 years after being taken out by Lenin and the Bolsheviks, the royal family was properly laid to rest. However, because Maria and Alexei's remains would not be discovered until 2007, they weren't included. The last two Romanov children are held in a government vault and still haven't been laid to rest with their family. In 1981, the Russian Orthodox Church canonized Nicholas, Alexandra, their children, and their servants as new martyrs. 
Then, in the year 2000, the Romanov family members were proclaimed to be passion bearers, which means that they were recognized as saints who faced death in a state of faith. Though it was once considered a national monument, the Soviet government had Ipetyev House demolished on September 22, 1977. The operation was directed by future president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin. In 1990, the land was gifted to the church, and in 2000, construction began on a memorial to the Romanov family. That monument, which is known as the Church on Blood in honor of all saints resplendent in the Russian land, or the Church on the Blood for short, still stands today. Its main altar is built directly over the site of the Romanov's demise. An Orthodox cross on the wall marks the exact spot on which the family met their fate. So what do you think? How big of a raw deal did the Romanov family get? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our Weird History.